Welcome back guys, and um, I promised I would review the Fairer Resolute. I am sitting here, it is exactly 7.46 p.m. in the middle of Michigan, and I'm recording outside again because it's, you gotta take advantage of your summers, okay? But another advantage of this is I have neutral lighting. Um, I have some shots that I took from the middle of the day, uh, sorry, in the evening, and I think daylight and sunlight gives you the best, the best shots, because you can see the watch sort of almost as the creator intended you to. Daylight is, is sort of a human being's default light temperature, and, um, it, it's good because on in in website promo shoots or other reviews they have studio lighting and they have cool lighting and warm lighting and it can kind of mess with how the watch appears and how the color appears and some of these colorful watches that I'm showing you guys will look very different depending on the type of lighting that you have and so I'm trying really hard to replicate the way that the watch would appear to you if you were to unbox it. And so that's why I include a lot of um, uh, on the wrist shots and B-roll and just some pictures and different lighting conditions in the dark and the light and, and, and stuff like that out in the wild. Um, let me know if you appreciate that. But anyway, we're gonna review the fairer. I have some B-roll. I tried recording my computer screen while I went through the fairer website so you can see the dimensions and whatnot. And so there's that. Um, so anyway, we're gonna sort of unbox it. I bought this watch way back in January. And man, I remember seeing it on the website and it was, I just thought it was so cool. I, I mean, I've seen enameled dials before, but this one just looks so sleek and so classy and so just the beauty of simplicity. I think that's the main thing about this watch. Anyway, I purchased it. I got it engraved on the back for free, which I thought was cool. I put a nice Bible verse on there and it was shipped to me from England to, I was living in North Carolina at the time. It was shipped to me from England to North Carolina in one day, I think. Free shipping, one day. Maybe it was two days. It was a astonishingly fast. I mean, it was just ridiculous. And I got a little handwritten note in the mail. I should have kept it. I'm sorry. If I'd had a YouTube channel back then, I would have kept it. I promise you. But it was very nice. Very nice packaging. This is the main box. It is a, you know, box. It's, um, it's cushioned a fabric. Very thick zipper here. Let me, let me back up a little bit. Oh, I can't, dang it. Anyway. So I've had this watch since January, and there it is. You have a little warranty card. It's very nice. So you bought it January 5th, SW200. It has a five-year warranty. Excludes the watch case, glass, crown, battery, straps, and any damage caused by excessive use. Wait a minute. Yeah, so it, it's just the movement. Um, so, but that's good. I mean, Salita's not gonna break or anything, so they could do that. But I'm glad that they do that. A lot of watches, they give, a, they give you a two-year warranty, they give you a five-year warranty. So this is the this is the strap that I bought it on. Uh, you can choose. I'll show you when I show you the website. You can choose a lot of different straps you buy this watch what with, which is nice. And they sell extra straps on the website. I will say this strap is very nice. Um, you saw it earlier on the the Studio Underdog review. It's it's probably their cheapest, lowest end strap. Oh, sorry, and. It's still pretty good. It's very heavy. It's very dense feeling. 
It's a great color, a great graining. Um, it's it's wearing out a little bit as you can see, but yeah. But this is the main this is the main show right here. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. It's just a gorgeous watch. Um, enameled lacquer dial and just three hand, no date. 39 and a half millimeters, 316L stainless steel, 10.8 millimeters thick, 45 millimeters lug to lug, 43 millimeters pin to pin. Um, we've got a polished case with brushing on the top. It is a very interesting brushing because it's it's very fine. It's very fine brushing that meets a polished polished sides with a bronze cap to the um, to the um, crown. Don't know why I couldn't remember that. It just says fair universal. The, oh gosh. The fairer is barely applied. It's hard to tell here. The fairer logo there on top of fairer is very 3D. And then there's automatic. You've got the fairer logo on the tip of the second hand, which is kind of cool. Um, the numerals, so you've got Arabic numerals all the way around. The numerals are applied um, ice blue super lumen nova. So they say white enameled polished lacquer, vintage curved dial, solid formed blocks of ice blue super lumen nova numerals topped in matte black. So the, the way they describe it is that there's chunks of loom. It's just a big chunk of loom that's covered in black. So it shines through and it's really cool and it's really good loom. It's really, um, it's kind of special. It, it doesn't look like a bunch of other watches out there. So that's kind of cool. Um, you've got Ice Blue Super Loom on the hands. What are these called? Syringe hands. Bright orange, second hand, seconds hand. Fair likes to do that. He likes to do very contrasting second hands. Some have pointed out that the finishing on some of the other watches, like the, the other versions of the three hand where the hands are metal, is kind of rough. And they're right. Even in the promo shots, you can see that. You don't have this problem though with this one because they're painted. And I don't know if it's showing up, but they're, they're painted black on the edges. And so you don't see that. So the finishing looks pretty good on the dial. If, it, if you're OCD about it, if, you know, if, if, it, if that sort of bothers you, then just don't get a watch from them that has um, plain steel hands or finishing. On the back, you have a display case back. It is a tried and true, very pedestrian SW200. You know, what's it got? 38 hours of power reserve. Um, it's going to be like plus or minus 25 seconds or so. It's, it's nothing super special, but it is a workhorse. It's very reliable. They decorated the rotor, and that's cool. It says fairer, 26 joules, Swiss made. On the back, you've got stainless steel, water resistant, 5 ATM. So 50 meters water resistant. This watch was $895. It doesn't have a date. It's not a chronograph. I would have liked it to be... 100 meters water resistant, especially because whoosh, you have this Tissot PRX that's 100 meters water resistant with a push pull crown, and it's a dress watch, basically. There's no reason this couldn't have been 100. That said, I have, for the sake of science, you guys, I've gone swimming with this watch. Call me stupid. And I've been in the shower with this watch, briefly. I've washed dishes in this watch. I've basically treated this, this has been my everyday watch. 
And I have a good collection. I have about 12, 13 watches. But this is sort of, the function of this watch in my collection is that of an everyday watch. Um, I'm a teacher. I have to dress up. I have to wear a tie every day. So I don't, I'm not like a construction worker or I don't do, I don't stress my watches out on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is a good everyday watch for me. If you're around water a lot, then maybe a dive watch is a good everyday watch for you, etc. But for my lifestyle, this is a great everyday watch. Um, I'll put it on the wrist here. I keep talking about it, take this TSO off. This is the next one that we're going to review. Pretty cool watch. Anyway, um, it kind of borderlines too big, um, but you'll see. So, there you go. I need to measure my wrist precisely, but it's, I think it's about six and a half inches, maybe a little larger. But it's a pretty small wrist, and the watch wears great. It's good. It, it's, it's a little bigger than I would like. Um, it's, it's not too big at all. It does keep very good time. Um, I don't have a time grapher with me. But I just remember, compared to other watches that I have, I have a Miyota 9 series watch, Miyota 8 series watch, a manual wine Vostok, which is awful. Um, the Orient Bambino, so it's a what, F67 movement, which is very, the particular model I have is very accurate in my sort of subjective perception. So, it's fine. I mean, like, you know. It seems to be pretty water resistant. Now it does have some scratches on it because I dropped it. You can, you can see right there. See that? Some scratches there. There's also some scratches on the case, which is difficult. To see. There you go. Right there. On the crystal. I was playing football don't judge me. Okay, this is not confession. All right, this is this is a judgment-free zone, right? Okay, well, this is playing the fitness right here. Okay, so don't judge me. I was playing football and I'm left-handed and I wear my watch on my left hand, which is a bad idea because every time I throw the ball, I exert a, a tremendous amount of force on the watch as I'm slinging my arm down. You know, because I'm throwing the ball 100 yards, 200 yards, you know, something like that. And. It flew off of the strap. It wasn't aftermarket strap. It wasn't this strap. And just slammed on the sidewalk and skidded and a bunch. And the only damage it took was a little nick here, as you saw earlier, and a little scratch on the crystal, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, now, I will put some shots in to show you the loom. It's hard to show you the loom. Maybe you can see it a little bit here, actually. No. You can't see it. Um, do some very natural light without even the lamp for the camera. Um, the loom is is what I think is just super super cool about this watch. Um, but anyway, so you know what else can you get for a thousand dollars? That's the only problem with this watch. It's a cool watch. Is it worth a thousand dollars? I don't know. I mean, you tell me in the comments down below. What do you think? Um, it's it. That's a tough. That's a tough sell. Um, it, now, there's been watches with Solita movements in them for more money than a thousand dollars. Uh, but, you know, you get into $1,500, close to $2,000, and you're getting proprietary, you know, nicer movements with 60, 70, 80 power reserve, 80 hour power reserves. This is 38. And so, you know, it, 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 it does make you pause and think. So what I think that Farer delivers is not in movement not in the movement it's not in the heritage 
It's not in the specs. They don't produce high spec watches. The, what they excel at is their dials, their colors. I mean, if you were to look on their website, they have some other cool watches. I think recently they've pushed, I mean, their, their Aquamatic dive watches look very half-baked to me. But they've got some really cool watches. They're very famous for their their Lander GMT. They just, they embrace color and fun. And I think that this watch is part of it. Now, this is the butterfly strap that I bought from Ferrer. Oh, wait, did I put it on upside down? No, I didn't. I didn't. The A's pointing up. Um, cost $140, made of steel. I, you guys know watches better than me. What, is this solid end links? I don't know. Curved, blah, blah, blah. Pins. It's, it, it feels kind of lightweight. Obviously, they're not like rolled links. It doesn't feel the best. It doesn't feel as good as the Tissot bracelet. It doesn't feel as good as my, I have a Zelos Horizons, which is gonna be in the queue for review. It doesn't feel as good as that bracelet. But it fits the watch. You can see it fits on there pretty nice. The brushing matches, right? And so it's really comfortable. And it adds kind of another layer of classiness and dressiness to the watch. Now, it's $140, so if you think 890 plus 140 humanities major here, but that's a that's a thousand thirty dollars, not including tax. And for that money, I don't know, you're looking at Well, for a little bit more, you're looking at Oris and Longines stuff, maybe. And hey, get out of here, squirrel. Good grief. It's like a zoo in here. Anyway, it looks pretty good on the wrist. Um, I'll show you some so shots with other watches, but the finishing is good. It's a simple watch. It does its job. It tells the time. It's water resistant enough to be put in the water. Yeah, for 900, 890, whatever it is, $890. It's a lot to ask, but th I think the dial is just very special. Um, and that's why I like it. Like I said, it's one of my favorite watches. What is it? Eight eight ninety five. Yeah, eight ninety five plus one hundred and forty dollars strap. I usually wear it on this strap. Sometimes I wear it on the orange strap that I'll show you, that I got from uh, the same eBay retailer that I showed you on the Studio Underdog review. If you want to see some of the other straps, you can see that. You can watch that video. Um, it pairs well with a NATO strap. Um, the, the NATO straps that I got. And I'll show you the B-roll with them. The NATO straps I got were very cheap. They're like ten dollars on cheapestnatostraps.com. I'll, I'll put a link below in the description. They're not bad. They look more expensive than they feel, but they don't feel terrible. If that makes sense. They they look kind of like a nice seatbelt NATO. They don't feel like that. They feel a bit tougher like cheaper sort of nylon these are single pass which are which is nice because they don't add a lot of bulk to the watch i like these colors i had a really nice burgundy one that i sold with a christopher ward watch that i sold on ebay that's kind of cool little paisley um they have some other ones that just really cool patterns um the pattern is not super clear you, you can see that but you know, they're like $10, $15, and it's fun. They ship from Germany, um, and I've enjoyed them. But yeah, tell me what you think. Um, is the dial, does the dial redeem 
the value of the watch or is putting in a Salita S200 and having only 50 meters of water resistance kind of make this watch useless as an everyday watch? Because a lot of times people think of an everyday watch as having 100 meters or more of water resistance. It does have a box sapphire crystal, which is nice. I mean, of course, at this price point, it would be unacceptable for it not to have that. And some good finishing. Um, but yeah, tell me what you guys think. And if you, if there are other comps, if there are other watches with enamel dials like this, um, or that even look the similar style, link them below in the description and point me to them. And help every help other people out who are watching this video. They're considering buying this watch, and they want to know what else is out there. And maybe I don't know about it, but you guys do. So feel free to leave any suggestions of alternative watches that are sort of in this vein of a dressy everyday watch um, that maybe excel this watch in some ways or beat it in price. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I think the next. Um, the next watch is going to be this little 35 millimeter Tissot in blue. I said in the first video, I thought I was getting green, which is really funny. So I thought I was getting green. And then I opened the package and it's blue. I actually ordered blue. The guy called me and said it was only available in green. And so he's going to ship me a green one. I was like, fine. I don't think the green's bad. I actually watched some reviews that showed that the green was a little bit too, like, I don't know, sea green or turquoisey green or blue green, and it, I didn't like it. I wanted it to be a deep green. It's not a deep green. It, trust me, some of the product shots show this watch in a deep, deep green, like this, or hunter green type deal. It's not. It's it's a light, I saw, I saw it in a shop, and then I've seen some other reviews on YouTube, and you can see for yourself. Anyway. I'm very glad I got the blue one, but this will be a review of its own. I want to put it through its paces some more. Uh, I really like it. But anyway, th this video is about this watch. Let me know what you think about this watch. All right, thanks for watching.